Good morning, good morning, 49er fam, 49er faithful, 49er gang. This is Dion here, your 49er reporter, back with another preview for this next and final week of the season. Let's get the particulars out of the way. Definitely hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button so you can make sure you keep yourself up to date on any and everything 49ers. And with that being said, let's get straight into it. So this is the game of the fucking year. And you can't tell me no different. Nobody else can say that. See, here's the thing. This game was purposely flexed into Sunday night. And you got to think about it. Like, it's a wild situation. Because what happens is we go in, we lose to the Falcons of all teams. Like, what the fuck? Falcons? You really lost? Shanahan's running a vanilla offense. Defense doesn't look great. We can't get home, you know. Against the offensive line that was terrible against other defensive lines. Got the Carolina slacked uh, Matt Ryan. I don't know how many times, man. So it's it's crazy. It's just straight up ridiculous. Then next thing you know, we go up against the Rams. We got to fight, man. You know what I'm saying? They ran the most bootlegs we've ever seen by a team in years. You know what I mean? They set a record for that, if I'm not mistaken. So, we got a fight, man. Ty Gurley gets us twice. You know, even though we didn't give up many yards to him, he still got us to get twice in the end zone. You know, Brandon Cooks was in there. That that game was a, a battle, man. But Robbie came through, which is good because we're going to need him. You know, every now and then you're going to need your kicker to be the, star, be the star, be the hero. So, what's funny is, is, man, the 12 in, in Seattle ain't who they used to be because Arizona went in there and whooped they ass. Chandler Jones made uh, Russell Wilson's life a living fucking hell. He didn't play with it. He broke him off. You know what I mean? Like, they just went in there and took over. And leading up to the, the, the final moments of that game, they had lost both their running backs. So all three of their running backs is out. CJ Pro Size, uh, uh, Chris Carson, and there's another dude. I can't remember his name right now. But, you know, all three of their running backs are out. So what do they do? News of the week, man. They make the shocking call. Actually, Lynch called them first. So Beast Mode called and said, hey, man, I see y'all down a couple of backs, man. You know, I'm, I'm still solid. I'm good. You know, I know it's been, you know, a little bit of time since I've been on the field, but I'm still eating Skittles, baby. And what happens? They say, all right, Marshawn, come on in. Let's see if you're ready. He was fit. They signed him. Then they signed some dude named Robert. They signed Robert Turbin. And they got some dude on their squad right now, and his last name is Homer. And the only thing I can think of is Homer Simpson. So I have no idea who this Homer kid is, what he can do, anything like that. We all know Beast Mode. We know how he runs. Beast Mode runs angry. So he's not running away from you. He's running at you and trying to run through and or over you. That is his style of running. Robert Turbin is a bruising runner as well. Um, you know, both of these guys are goal line backs. So that's the hard part about it is... You know, if we get on the goal line, we really got to be very stout up front on defense to be able to stop both of these dudes. We don't know what Beast Mode will have. We don't know what Robert Turbin will have because neither one of them are in football shape. They were both at home on the couch doing nothing. And when I say on the couch doing nothing, I don't mean they weren't staying in shape, but they weren't getting hit. They weren't playing football. So with that being said, we don't know, you know, what they're going to bring to the game. But either way... It's just going to be a hell of a game. You know, it was a primetime game. It was flexing that spot purposely. It was a setup, man. Come on now. You know, every other game that's on that day, people will be watching because, you know, if Dallas wins, they win the division. If they lose and Philly wins, Philly wins the division. You know, like it's – there are other playoff implications in their seeding and stuff like that. But we are fighting for the number one seed, fighting for the NFC West crown. And I doubt highly that – Anyone is going to want to have to face us in the playoffs. So, you know what I mean? For us, the offense, Jimmy G, must get the ball out quicker. That last game, man, he held the ball like it was his child and he didn't want to give it up. 
you know, like he was about to go in and give it up for adoption or something. Jimmy got to be smarter, man. And he got to, he, he has to pull the fucking trigger. You know, I can understand if you go through your reads and nobody's open, but you got to start making plays happen because you can't stand in that pocket like that. Last time when he stood in the pocket, he wound up getting happy feet and dancing all over the damn place because Jadavion Clowney was in the backfield hanging out like he knew the fucking calls and he knew when the ball was about to be hyped. You know what I'm saying? That was Joe Staley's first game back, and he punked Joe Staley. So we have to expect Staley to be a lot better. Now, I watched the interview yesterday uh, with Staley, and Staley was saying, yeah, that was my first game back. You know, I had to kind of get my feet wet again and get back in the football shape, get used to getting hit. But... <laughs> With this game, it'll be a lot different, you know. I'm back, I got my feet back under me, I'm good, like I'm ready. You know what I mean? And Clowney's coming from a core muscle injury, so he's probably not going to have that same push and power that he had because he's going to be trying to fight through it. And I know sometimes adrenaline can can push pain away, but it's not going to be the same. You know, you still, you're going to feel it eventually because he's going to have to come off the field, sit down. And once the adrenaline slows down, it's going to wind up getting to him. So he'll probably have to, you know, try to chill out a little bit. He won't be able to rush as hard as he was the last game. So, you know what I'm saying? It, it's, it's just, it, it's going to be, you know, a, a big question mark for us because the interior of the line will be tested. Mike Person is not going to play because his neck injury is still bothering him. So we got Daniel Brunskill starting in at, I believe, left or right guard. I don't remember which one. And Brunskill has been playing all over the offensive line. He's played tackle. He's played guard. And if I'm not mistaken, he could probably play center as well. So he most likely took Sean Coleman's spot. So Sean Coleman being injured and being out on IR, and he was our, I think he was only on like a one-year deal anyway. Won't need him. We have Brunskill. We'll probably get him for cheaper anyway. Um, so, you know, we must execute on offense, get the run game going. Um, and control that clock and keep Russell Wilson off the field. We got to play forward with a lead, and we cannot get into the red zone and not score. Don't get me wrong. I like a field goal just as much as anyone, but I like a field goal to win the game or something like that. I don't like field goals when we're in the red zone. Richie James put us in solid position against the Rams on that first drive we had, and we went down there and fucking laid a goose egg. And we wound up with only three points. That's bullshit. You don't put some. You don't put your team, your offense, that close to the damn goal line, and they can't even get the job done. Get the job done. We're in the red zone. Find KB. He's money in the red zone. He doesn't drop touchdowns. That's one thing I can say about the kid. Everybody gets on him about drops and everything, but he doesn't drop shit in the red zone. He's money every fucking time. If you got to make him your red zone target, find a way. Because they tried to hit Kittle up the middle, and the linebacker went ahead and knocked that shit down. Me, personally, I thought it was pass interference because he wasn't looking for the ball, but probably had the right, right good enough angle on him where, you know, the ref was like, I right, we're not going to call that. He just knocked the ball down. But we've got to get in there. You know, Robbie has been money lately, but we need TDs. Like I said, hit Kittle, hit KB. You know what I'm saying? If you're close enough, make sure that you get, you know, that, that you get Raheem to dream the ball. You know, because he can bounce out. He's fast enough. He bounces out and gets out there and he makes plays. Um, and for this game, to be honest with you, man, they got beast mode. Fuck it. Let's activate our little mini beast mode. Activate Jeff Wilson Jr. for the game. Last game, Matt Breida didn't have a touch. Now, Shanahan in his press interview said that that wasn't the way it was supposed to be. It just worked out like that. I'm seeing a changing of the guard because Breida is very often injured. You're not going to have Matt Breida for a full season. We never have in his whole career. He always winds up getting nicked up, beat up, anything. And it's not to say that he's not a skilled, talented receiver. He can do everything that you would want a back to do in Kyle Shanahan's offense. But I feel like next year, we may wind up dropping two running backs. You drop Jarek McKinnon because he, he ain't been on the field since he's been here. Except for in practice, and then he fucked around, and he's sitting there doing nothing. Again, getting paid for nothing. Again, I've been said cut his ass, because if you ain't on the field producing, what the fuck are you there for? And they may just let Matt Breida go and run the line with Raheem Nadrine, uh touchdown TC, and, you know, uh, Mr. Jeff Wilson Jr. himself. 
Those are three viable backs. You know, you put Jeff on the goal line, uh, TC and Raheem, they can get out there and do what they need to do. They both can catch the ball out of the backfield. They both can run the ball. So why do you need two guys that don't even play? You know what I mean? I mean, that's just my thought process, but I could be wrong. And, you know, to be honest with you, we got to feed Raheem the dream most of We got to feed him. He's the feature back. He's taking over the number one. He's taking over the number one spot, period. You're not going to change that up. You know what I mean? Play action. If we feed him mostly, we can set that play action up and kill them. And kill them with George Kittle. Kill them with KB. Kill them with E-Man. Kill them with Debo. Believe you me, man. We have way too many options and way too many weapons for us to lose this game. You know what I'm saying? We want... Touchdowns when we get in that red zone. We do not want to have this come down to another field goal or none of that crap. That 12 is dead. That stadium is loud. Yes, they do get loud, but it doesn't impact shit anymore. They ain't there getting punked. The Seahawks are actually worse at home than they are on the road. And it's been Seahawks fans out there, oh, you know, we like going on the road anyway. Really? Y'all like losing at home? Because we was pissed when they came in and got us in our house. And then another tidbit, man, you know we ain't won in Seattle since 2011. That's eight fucking years that we have just been getting our asses handed to us in that place. We got to do what we got to do. We got to make this shit happen, guys. We got to make it happen. So next up for us has 49ers. Defensive line has to get Home. We must sack Russell Wilson. We must not break, you know, we must not break contain. We must not over pursue. We have to get to him. Um, the one thing that has happened is we did go ahead and cut Jeremiah Valawaga and we signed this dude Zettel. Now, I didn't know who Zettel was or what he does or anything. I know he came from Detroit and he was cut from there. And it wasn't a bad thing. There wasn't a negative reason he was cut. But what I can tell you is I went ahead and me being me, I did my research. I said, fuck it. All right, we got a new dude. You know, he had a couple of sacks. Let me see what's going on with this cat. Let me see, you know, what you know what he, what he does. He's got a great motor. And he seems to be able to come off the edge very, very well. It doesn't matter what edge either. So if Nick decides to switch to the left or to the right or whatever, you know, whichever way he wants it, Anthony will be there. I believe that most likely will wind up being the starting uh, another starting defense man out there with Bosa, um, but he's got a nasty little get off, man. He does. He has a nasty little get off, and I think he's right for the defense because the same defense they run in Detroit is what we run here in San Francisco. So he's not going to come in and be you know slow to get everything going. But the beauty of having signed him is that they feel like he'll get more pressure off the edge and will be able to get to Russell a little bit faster. Um, but the issue is, is that it's over pursuing Russell. It's always been that way. You cannot over pursue him because the minute you do, he will make you pay with his legs. And Russell's really good on the move, make taking time to make plays. So you don't want to have to cover a receiver for like eight, nine seconds. You want to only cover a receiver for about, you know, maybe three to four, you know. So the one thing is, is that, you know, we got to blitz every now and then, man. We got to switch the scheme up. The only thing I don't like is that every interview that I've ever watched Robert Sala, and y'all can attest to this if y'all faithful and y'all watch the interviews like I do because I'm subscribed to the 49ers channel. So I see their press pass interviews. Ever since he's been here, man, he's, he's always talked about the scheme. The scheme, you know, if you, if, you, if, you, you know, if you follow your points in the scheme, everything will, you know, line up the way it's supposed to be. Right? No, the fuck it won't. And that's been proven. You know why? Because teams have been eating us up lately and scoring points on us lately. And you know where they're doing it? In those soft spots in that fucking zone scheme that you continue to run. I hate zone schemes to an extent. Because they just they leave too many places open. There's little pockets and shit where defenses can be exploited when they run a zone scheme. The wide nine technique. If they run up that gut, they got all access to go right up the middle and get a nice chunk of yards. You know why? Because that's what the wide nine is susceptible to. So here's the thing. We have to be smarter. Every now and then we're going to have to switch it up where we play man. Akello's going to have to stop being a little bitch and get on his fucking job. 
because he's been getting punked these last few games. He played so far off Julio Jones. Julio Jones could have brought his woman in and had a fucking dinner. He gave that motherfucker so much cushion. Like, damn, man. Like, I, the, the thing that's killing me in these games is when I see the players playing defense, I, I feel like this. Y'all don't know how to jam people off the line? Five yards, you can get that motherfucker hell, man. You just don't have to hold. I mean, shit, I don't give a fuck how strong somebody is. That two seconds that you give them where they're trying to find a way to fight your arms off them will wind up being two seconds that gives us, you know, a little bit more time to get to the quarterback. Now, we're not facing a stand-in-the-pocket quarterback. We're facing a mobile guy. And Russell Wilson is great on the move or standing in the pocket or running. So he's a triple-threat quarterback, and we got to be aware of that. So our defensive backs have to do the job as well, man. Now don't don't be don't get me wrong. We got Uncle Sherm, we got K one, and we don't have Tart for this game. Tart's out. I'm gonna tell y'all right now. We ain't gonna see Tart and D Ford until the uh, postseason, you know. But Akello gotta step his shit up, man. And Robert Sala gotta stop being stubborn with this fucking scheme and switch this shit up, man. Stop being so goddamn predictable. It drives me insane that every time we play a game, they already know what the fuck we about to do. Well, they're going to run that same cover two, cover three zone scheme. So, here are your points. Here are your spots. Hit those, and we can get you. Tyler Higby had nine catches for 104 fucking yards. Why? Because he found the soft spots in the zone, and they was getting his ass right there, man. That's what happened. Plain and simple. You know what I mean? They ran those bootlegs so the defensive line couldn't get to him. You know, because it took him more time. We don't had the interior guys were playing out outside. You know, Nick coming off his edge is fast. But Eric Arnold said ain't no damn lightning bolt when he run. That's a big ass boy. You know what I'm saying? Six foot seven, almost three hundred pounds. Yeah, that, that he ain't moving like he ain't moving like lightning. So <laughs> Salah has to be able to blitz more and he's gotta allow us to play some man defense every now and then. You know, tell him, hey, look, guys, we're going to switch it up this game. We're not going to tell nobody. But, look, every now and then, man, look, if you got DK Metcalf, punk that motherfucker. Shove his ass. Make sure he can't get off that fucking line. You know what I'm saying? Tyler Lockett, K1, he's sliding to that slot. Give his ass hell. Make sure he don't get off that line real easily, man. Give him a quick little jab, a little push, quick little punch to his chest, man. Switch it up. And for the defense, for the front seven, you know what he does? Hey, look, we're going to blitz every now and then in this game. Dre, I'm going to send your ass in there. Aziz, get your ass in that backfield. You know what I'm saying? Every now and then, Shark, I'm going to send you two. We have to switch it up. We're too fucking predictable. And if we continue to play the way that we have been playing, we're going to get our asses killed. So we've got to be smart this game, and we've got to change up the way that we play. we got to stop being so easy to predict when it comes to defense. And Salah's got to give up that fucking stubbornness with that goddamn uh, that goddamn zone scheme, man. Everybody knows what it is. Everybody knows how it works. And it's going to be way too fucking easy for people to just exploit that for the spots that they can make <clears throat> easy plays for, man. We don't have time for that shit. So, you know... For us, it's very important that we win this game because we will get the number one seed. The one thing that I can say is is I don't want to lose the game, but if we do, however, we're still in the playoffs. We will have to travel if we do lose this game. We're going to have to be on the road for every fucking game because we didn't win our division when there are too many other teams that have a record like us. We got Green Bay. We got uh, we have um, the uh, Saints as well. And, you know, even though the Cowboys and the Eagles have a worse record than either one, you know, than us uh, at all, they still would win their division. So we'd have to go to their house because they'll be hosting the game. Um, even though I think that either one of those games, whether we play Cowboys or the Eagles, would be a fucking, you know, that'd be a, a, a fucking disaster for that other team, uh, whoever it is that we would play because we'd kill them. So, you know what I'm saying? The, the key for us on defense is, we have to stop, you know, Marshawn Lynch because he is still beast mode, and I'm pretty sure he's still got a couple of good runs left in him. Everybody does. You know what I'm saying? Jerry Rice has been on the sideline for years and years and years, and I can tell you right now, Jerry at least got probably 12 catches and 150 yards and maybe two TDs in him at the age he is now. He stays in great shape. But we got to stop 
DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. Those are the two guys we're going to have to key in on because those are the two number one, you know, the one and the two receivers, and those are going to be the guys that we have to be very careful of. Now, they had that uh, that kid, Jacob Hollister, man, and he got us last time we played them, you know, when they got us in our house. Eight catches, 62 yards in the TD. we got to be on these fucking tight ends. We cannot let them run free and score all over us and do these things. And put us in a you know in an uncompromising position. We have to be on our shit. So, you know, what I'm saying we've had tight end problems as of late. Just stopping people, man. But I've already touched on everything I need to touch on. And the one, the last thing I'm gonna touch on is that we lost Julian Taylor. He's out for the season. He tore his ACL. So it's, then we're down another fucking lineman. So. This is, you know, D Ford, he's been out for weeks. We know he won't be back to the playoffs. And he better get his in the playoffs, man. I don't want to see him go on the sideline for any fucking reason. If he does, man, that was a waste. And they need to restructure his fucking contract and take some of that goddamn money back. Open that money up for Kiddo or open that money up for Defo, guys who are on the field producing, doing things for us. Because it ain't no point for somebody to be paying you all that goddamn money, bro, and you on the fucking lot sideline sitting there. You know what I'm saying? First couple of games, you come out, oh, oh, I got six and a half sacks, coach, I'm good. Next thing you know, here you go, hamstring, none of hamstring injury, none of hamstring injury. Like, you're just sitting on the sidelines, and I, I'm not I'm not a fan of that. I don't care how good you are. If you on the sidelines, you better be out for the fucking year for a reason. You can't just be in the game and out the game, and in the game and out the game, and in the game and out the game. I understand injuries happen, but this is fucking stupid. He constantly is doing this. He's been doing this since he's been here, man. And I feel like we wasted a fucking second round pick. We could have drafted somebody to do the job that he did rather than just be sitting there paying the dude almost $84 million to be sitting on the goddamn sideline talking about, oh, my hamstring is hurt. I get it. But at the end of the day, man, we need players on the field and producing. This has always been my attitude. And if you don't like it, oh, fucking well. So this is our literal rotation for our defensive line. We called up Kevin Gibbons because of Julian Taylor being hurt. So we have Kevin Gibbons. We have Nick Bosa, DeForest Buckner, Eric Armstead, Sheldon Day, uh, Solomon Thomas, Contavious Street, Anthony Zettel, and, of course, Gibbons. So that literally leaves us eight rotational guys on that line, and we have to make sure we continually spell these guys so that they don't get tired and they don't get overworked. That's been the issue with our defensive line. That's why we haven't gotten home because they've just been tired as fuck, man. When you're out there playing 690 snaps, that'll wear your ass out. That's a whole lot of shit to deal with. So, to be honest with you, Sheldon Day is our only true nose tackle. You know what I'm saying? We had Julian Taylor. He would have been a great, you know, dude for that. We had DJ Jones. He went down. You know, we had Ronald Blair. He went down. So, it, it just becomes a bitch, you know, losing all these players, man. But we got to play through it. It's an next man up mentality. You know what I mean? So, I say we go in there and we get in that ass. We win. We beat Seattle. We get the number one seed. And the main focus for us, the reason for us to get this number one seed is so that everything runs through Santa Clara. And at the fact that we need this rest. The more rest we have the easier it will be for our players to come in, fresh legs, and get out there and do what they need to do. Once again, key points for this game. Contain Russell Wilson, slow down Metcalf and Tyler Lockett, and make sure that we try to you know, do what we can and make sure that we don't let beast mode get back into a mental beast mode. We don't need him to get that big bruising run where he's running over people and then start thinking, I got it again. We need to keep him contained, just have him do his little mini, you know, small minor yards and do that. And... And then on the defensive side of the ball, switch up the scheme, man. Stop being so predictable. If you run that same base, funky-ass defense you've been running, they're going to exploit the holes in your zone, find them soft spots, and eat your ass alive. We have to be smart about this. Hopefully, Tarverius Moore is back from his concussion protocol. It looks like he's actually been doing very well um, with not having any issues. So if he gets back, that's cool because we could put him in safety if need be. But it looks like Marshall Harris will most likely start this game with Tart being out. And Brunskill will start at guard because Mike Person is dealing with a neck injury. Other than that, we are fully healthy aside from the injuries that we already have. So we got to get home. We got to get to the quarterback. 
got to blitz every now and then. We have to be allowed to play man every now and then. Punk these motherfuckers off the line. Do different things, man. When you run the same damn scheme and the same bullshit plays, they know what the fuck you're doing. They run the same type of shit. So they're going to be like, oh, okay, they lined up in this. Probably going to run that. Oh, look, there it is. Here's the spot. That's what you need to do. Be, stop being predictable, Sala. Stop being predictable. At the end of the day, baby, you need to go in there, kick these Seahawks ass so we can get this week off, get this W, and I'm going to be doing a little live one. I'm, I'm going to set it up at the, uh, you know, at the game because I want to get everybody's fan reaction, man. Like I'm, I'm gonna, And then I'm going to be doing a little bit more on this channel and open it up for the playoffs. So I'm going to be reporting on every game because every game is going to count. We're going to need to know who we're going to play. And I want to know how these teams are looking because in the playoffs, teams look different, man. You know, over in the AFC, I'm going to tell y'all right now, everybody think the Patriots is finished. Tom Brady and the Patriots turned to a whole nother fucking team when they play in the playoffs, man. The loss they had to Houston, the loss they had to Baltimore, you know what I'm saying, the fights with KC, y'all, hey man, sleep on them if you want to. Belichick will find a way to make you pay. I don't give a fuck about cheating, none of that bullshit. It don't matter. If you cheat, I mean, if you ain't cheating, you ain't winning. You ain't trying, whatever the case, whatever the saying is. But hey, man, stay 49er faithful, stay 49er blessed. I'm out. I will see y'all tomorrow when we kick the Seahawks' ass.